Well, I want to start by passing on my colleague Maddie Goujon's apologies for being unable to join you in Abbey Moor today. I know she'd been very much looking forward to it, but unfortunately, a personal matter has prevented her from being with you. She's asked me to pass on her best wishes for a very successful day. It's a real pleasure for me to be asked to deliver the opening speech for the Scottish Land Commission's biannual conference on her behalf. And first, can I take the opportunity to welcome Michael Russell in his new role as chair of the commission and Deb Roberts and Craig McKenzie as new land commissioners. I'd also like to offer my sincere thanks to the former land commissioners, David Adams and Megan McInnes and the former chair, Andrew Thin, for their achievements and their contributions. With the other commissioners, they've worked hard to develop an incredibly effective organisation. Getting the commission up and running on time on the 1st of April 2017, they all brought valuable knowledge, skills and experience, putting the commission on a firm footing. And it's because of that work that the commission is a respected and authoritative voice in land reform, from supporting the delivery of land reform measures that have already been enacted, to supporting further reform with advice based on research and evidence. But it's not only the Commission's work on land reform which deserves recognition. The Commission is involved in substantial work on good practice, tenant farming, natural capital and housing. I know that, like me, you're passionate about the future of Scotland's land. That's why events like this bringing together key stakeholders to discuss innovative and practical approaches to land ownership and governance are so important to help change how Scotland's land is owned and managed for the better. We've got a proud history of land reform since devolution, but despite that positive progress, Scotland remains a country where the ownership of land is still deeply concentrated in the hands of a relatively few number of people and organisations. As we all know, land is key to ensuring that communities can thrive, giving people places to live, to work, and providing the essential infrastructure and community spaces that people need. That's why in March we introduced the new Land Reform Bill. It was, as I'm sure you'll know, the research and the recommendations of the Land Commission that provided the foundation for the proposals in the bill. The bill sets out ambitious proposals that will change how land is owned and managed in our rural and island communities. I appreciate many of you in this room are already very well versed on the bill's proposals. But for those of you that are coming to it afresh, if passed by the Parliament, the bill will prohibit certain sales over a thousand hectares until ministers can consider the impact on the local community. That could lead to some land holdings being lotted into smaller parts if it helps local communities. Land and access to land is essential for sustainable development. It's key to many important aspects of people's lives, housing, recreation, agriculture, mitigating climate change, it's important that the interests of local communities in the land around them are considered when large land holdings are to be sold. The bill also seeks to empower communities with more opportunities to own land by introducing advance notice of certain sales from large land holdings. There'll be additional legal responsibilities on the owners of the very largest land holdings, those over 3,000 hectares. Owners will need to prepare a land management plan and they'll need to make sure they're engaging with people who could be impacted by how they choose to manage their land. The bill also includes a range of measures to give Scotland's tenant farmers and small landholders better opportunities to become more sustainable and productive in their farming and to be rewarded for their investment of time and resources. I'll touch on more of that later, but Bob McIntosh, the tenant farming commissioner, has an important job in that regard and I'm grateful for his contribution over the years. I want more people in Scotland to have more say in and more benefit from how our land is owned, used and managed. Our options and ambitions are limited without the full powers, resources and levers of independence, but we can and we are making the most of the powers that we have to deliver change. I believe that we've introduced an ambitious bill that improves the balance of rights and responsibilities on those who own large amounts of land. But we're always willing to consider where we might improve and to listen to feedback on the bill as it proceeds through Parliament. Your voice will continue to be an important part of making sure that this bill is effective. Whilst the proposals in the bill seek to build on and complement existing legislation, it's also important to acknowledge the good practice that's already happening. 
The Land Commission is providing leadership when it comes to promoting and supporting change and good practice in the way that land is owned and used through its Good Practice Programme. The Good Practice Programme is underpinned by the Scottish Government's Land Rights and Responsibilities Statement, an important provision of the 2016 Land Reform Act. Our vision is for a Scotland with a strong and dynamic relationship between the land and people, where all land contributes to a modern, sustainable and successful country. That land that supports a just transition to net zero, and where rights and responsibilities in relation to land and its natural capital are fully recognised and fulfilled. The work of the Land Commission's Good Practice Advisory Group and their series of land rights and responsibilities protocols sets out practical advice on how land managers and communities can work together to make better and fairer decisions about land use. Public and Scottish Crown state land makes up around 11% of Scotland's land mass and it's vital that we maximise the benefits from this land for communities, climate and nature. For example, we're currently investigating how strategic landscape scale nature restoration activity can be delivered by different public landowners working collaboratively across ownership boundaries on issues like deer control and nature networks. I know many of you are already engaged with the Land Commission's Good Practice Programme. I'd encourage you to continue to promote and support good practice with your members and stakeholders. Turning now to tenant farming, since joining the Commission in 2017, Bob has done an amazing job in developing the role of the Tenant Farming Commissioner to make it the successful role that it is today. Many land reform bill discussions have highlighted their importance in improving relations between landlords and tenant farmers. I'm grateful for Bob's continued guidance as part of the Tenant Farming Advisory Forum, informing the tenancy reforms in the bill. And I'm very excited that the bill will empower tenant farmers with more opportunities to deliver improvements to the land they farm, to become more sustainable and productive in their farming, and to be rewarded for their investment of time and resources. The proposed land management tenancy will create a new approach to land management. It will enable people and communities to undertake a range of land management activities that help to deliver net zero biodiversity, sustainable and regenerative agriculture. Not only is it important to support existing landlords and tenants, but also to encourage new entrants to the sector. So there's a lot of activity happening in this area, and I hope that over the course of today, you are able to engage with the bill and the protocols and the policies that the Scottish Government has put in place. We continue to value the input from the Scottish Land Commission and wish you well in your work. Thanks very much.